The, the LIVE model is a long-term foster care where children have a sense of belonging in a supportive community. So um, orphaned and vulnerable children are placed into a family environment. And basically, the model of LIVE is that they are building villages around South Africa where there is a lot of orphaned and vulnerable children putting them into a family home so villages are being built homes are being built within the village a mother then gets a sort of a job as a mother in the village and they can have up to six children living with them um, and then on the village there is a school a church a medical center and um, there is jobs and so they're basically lives vision is to Basically, they think that the the cycle of sort of this unemployment, poverty, broken homes can only change as like a ripple effect. So they're, they're working on really creating that family dynamic, all rooted in Christian beliefs and values. Um, so their main focus is the love of Jesus. And hopefully that will sort of spread out and begin to change generations as it goes. Um, so that's sort of the aim of LIVE. So they focus on physical and emotional and spiritual healing and education. Um, so they're trying to teach people uh, and look after them at the same time. So they believe that the family environment, education and teaching and the love of Jesus are the three most important things that are going to see changes. Um, so LIV was founded in 1977. It was just a vision then. And by, um, by 2011, the flagship village, which is in Durban, was fully up and running. Um, so it's sort of, it's been you know, a, a process and it is still a process. Um, so where is Liv? Liv is sort of working now all over South Africa and there's lots of different pockets now of the charity, um, but their main villages at the moment are in Cape Town and Durban. And I went to Grahamstown, which is where Robin lives, which is where their sort of latest project is evolving at the moment. So on the next slide, I've got a little video to show you, sort of just it's put into better words than I kind of of what the aim of LIV is and, and why and how it was sort of founded. Um, so the guy speaking at the start is the founder. In this country. We have five million orphan children. Thousands are being added to that monthly. There are many child at homes, kids on the streets, kids getting raped and abused from young ages. What are we going to do about it? Are we going to leave a legacy for generations to come? My dad left me when I was a baby. My mother used to hit me. I had to be taken away from her. My mother died of AIDS when I was a little boy. I had no one to look after me. I had to look after myself. And I also had to look after my younger brother and sister. I didn't think I was important. I didn't believe anyone would love me. God gave me a vision to build villages for these precious children, to create an environment that would come to know him as their father, that they would live in homes with a mother, they would be fed and educated to the glory of God, that we would create jobs for the rural communities, that they can sustain their families, and the government will come and see why it works. But we need many villages around this nation, not only this nation, but throughout Africa. I came to live with my brother and sister. We have a foster mother and new brothers and sister. We have a home that has everything we need. At school, we receive best education and play lots of sports. At love, my story changes. I know I have a father in heaven who loves me. I know that I'm important. One day, I will be a great leader in South Africa. I was rescued. I am being restored. I am being raised up to be released as a star. But there are still millions of children like me in this country without hope. Leave has changed my life. 
We ask you to help to change many more. We'll have a thousand children on this first village. We purchased the farm next door, 140 hectares. So we're hoping to put two to three thousand children in two to three villages over the next three to four years. We negotiate with people in different parts of the country and we hope to have villages that will spring up all over this country in the near future. We need many resources to make this vision a reality. If we're going to transform this nation, the continent of Africa, we need business and government and church to work together and we can make this happen. Partner with us and let's make this vision a reality. Great. So <clears throat> I just wanted to show that because it, it sort of gives a, a picture of um, how it started and the impact it's already having. Um, so, you know, I've had um, friends go and volunteer at the other uh, villages for sort of six months to a year. Um, and they just say like the the environment is amazing um, so yeah so in sort of a nutshell before we move on to what I went to do Liv is aiming to provide a stable home um, a caring mother uh, food to eat education jobs for individuals in the surrounding areas um, but most importantly the the love of Jesus so on the next slide um, so this here is you know just a picture of some land um, and i'll explain a little bit about where this is so lively caniso is what is going to be the live village in grahamstown and it means light and what they want live to be is a light in the village so this land here is where Live Village is going to go. So Live now own this land. Um, and you can see maybe on the sort of horizon, there is on, on a smaller screen, it's sort of lots of little buildings. And that is the very edge of the township. So that is it. This land is backing right onto the township. Um, so Grahamstown has about 140,000 people um, living in it. It's in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. 79% um, of those are black African. 8% of those, 8% um, of the population is white. So um, and more people live in the township than in the town so the township makes up most of the town um i think it's the only place i've ever been that isn't a farm where cows were literally roaming around like you would have to stop your car for a cow to cross the road um, and donkeys were everywhere and um, so it's a really really interesting um place um, but yeah, the ta the township is huge. Um, so Grahamstown is um, well. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about about the land first. So basically, there is a lady called Lara who is a good friend of Robin's and colleague of Robin's, um, and she had a vision for Grahamstown that we would. Um, that they would see a live village be built there and she started fundraising and um sort of starting to think about what land would be suitable for the village uh, to go on to and then um when she was looking around different places and you know telling people um about the money they'd raised and the deposit that they had um a building company had this land and have gifted it to live completely free of charge so um that was straight away sort of god's confirmation that he um you know he is totally in this um plan and he wants this village there because you know that's pretty unheard of it's a huge huge piece of land and the the one condition that this company gave was that they had to use their bricks that they make to build the houses and those would be given at a discounted rate so straight away um you know the wheels are in motion now for um for the village so at what they sort of envision they've placed they've chosen um it to be right on the edge of the township because what they want is sort of the the strength of the village to ripple out into the township so they want people to be able to come into the village for work so providing jobs from the township for for people from the township um, and also people be able to come to the church that will be um, in 
in the village and also vice versa. So they want it to be sort of a, a point of relationship, um, not a separate place on their own that is like, oh, you know, live village by itself and the rest of the the town they want it to be very much um amalgamated um so this is where i went so you might be wondering like well what did you do if the, that's currently the village um and i'm not much of a gardener so um but so i did sort of i visited two places mostly um so the first one on the next slide so i went to a place very often called little flowers nursery so um at the moment liv are just working on building their relationships with people in the local area they are supporting families um, and these links will be carried into the village once the village is um built and ready to be lived in so basically little flowers nursery is um a nursery in the township children have to pay to go so it costs 200 rand a month to go which is 10 pounds um, and during that time you get your breakfast they get a hot breakfast and they get a hot lunch and um, so they're there from it should be eight o'clock in the morning but um from about 6 45 kids are banging on the gate ready to get in um so these parents, the parents of these children, most of them go to work. So um, these kids are in, some of them are in, you know, it's not, it's not by any stretch a, a privileged position. And sometimes that money is really, really hard to get together. But um, most of these children's parents do go to work, which means they need um, daycare for their children. Um, now, Lungi, is a lady who set up this nursery so she's on a couple of these pictures um and lungi is a a single mom of two um just go back for me we don't need to that's just a little bit if we keep going backwards we'll go back again yeah we can just leave it on that one for a minute thank you so lungi is a, a mother of two so her house is actually at the nursery the nursery is two rooms and a tiny kitchen and they have between anywhere between 50 and 70 children every single day ranging from the age of six months to five years um which i don't think is would you know we're allowed 30 children maximum sort of thing in a classroom um, and it's quite a big space so um, and I one day there was like hardly any kids there and I was like where is everyone and they were like oh it's too cold so they they have the day off when it's a bit too cold um, so it's very different to England um, but they had like a really structured day so it started off sort of with they they would learn they're learning the alphabet they're learning songs um colors sort of how to um say a few phrases in english um and um more importantly they get there's a picture up there they get like washed when they arrive they get their teeth cleaned they get their um two hot meals a day and then they even go to sleep for like an hour and a half um because they might be living in homes with like eight or nine children at home um so after lunch they sort of put their head down on the table i'm sure we all feel like doing that sometimes and have a little sleep um and so whilst i was there um i just helped out as much as i could so i did quite a lot of paperwork in the office um which you know i tried my best to sort of understand it and and do what i could to be helpful i tried to teach them some songs and um lungi just kept saying to me just just teach them something that you teach at school but i i teach pe and <laughs> they don't understand English really. So we did a lot of running around um, and a lot of head, shoulders, knees and toes. Um, and that was about the extent of my teaching. Um, but I love to cook 
and I spent loads of time. That top picture in the left is the tiny little kitchen and I spent loads of time with, they call her auntie, the lady that works in the kitchen, helping her, um, preparing meals for the children and um, sort of loads of time just chatting with her and, and being in there with her um, and doing the shopping with her. And um, it was just really nice to be able to sort of serve them in that way, doing something um, I really love and you know food is so gratefully received and so to be able to sort of go out shopping with them and with some of the money that was gifted I was able to buy some nicer things that they wouldn't normally have um, so we made some really um, nice meals that were a real treat for them which was um, such a blessing as well. I also did some cleaning, I quite enjoy cleaning. Um, so did some cleaning for them and just changed their displays and things like that. So basically I would go there every morning to just try and support them as best as I could. Um, so that was sort of how I spent my mornings. Um, I'm still in touch with Lungi most days um, to see how they're getting on at the nursery. Um, and some of these children um, will, you know, live, our constantly sort of going into there and supporting them and it will become sort of a feed-in place to live village when that is built and um, there are children there that need support so that was sort of my mornings um, we can move on now to the next slide which is the next one sorry and then I think one more yeah, so this next place, so this place is a really, really, really special place. So um, there is a place called the Home of Joy um, Child and Youth Care Centre. And I spent a lot of time here and Robin spends a lot of time um, there when, you know, just on a day to day. So this is a orphanage essentially so it's a, a children's center for children with no parents or carers or no suitable parents or carers so um, when I spoke to a lot of the sort of teenagers that live in this home um, they have been abused sexually abused emotionally abused neglected abandoned um, and have been put into care there are children there from three months old to 22 years old, a couple of the children there have um, quite severe learning difficulties. Um, and this is not funded at all by the government. Um, it's not recognized as a care home by the government because it's not viewed as a suitable home because it is somebody's home. They only have one bathroom um, and there are no paid staff at this care home. Uh, and at the moment there are um like up to 30 children live in 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 the house so um if we just go on to the next slide um so this lady here so this is robin uh, and myself and the lady in the middle is a lady called margaret and the kids call her gogo -Go, which means grandma and um gogo -Go is 75 and she runs this care home completely with the help of her daughter um, but she is a mother to every single one of these children and she is fighting their battles for them and looking after them and caring for them um, every single day she's a christian and um, she really loves jesus and i said to her one day i said what do you do go go when when you get a phone call that there's a new child being dropped off i said what what is the first thing you do and she said i've got i've got three medicines for them and i wondered what, what she was going to say like cal paul or and um i said what you know, what are the three medicines and she said the first one is jesus um and she said they need love and they need to know about jesus and they they need to know that jesus loves them and cares for them the second one is food and rest um, so I feed them until they can't be fed anymore um, and I give them a bed which is their own space and clothes and then she said and then the third one is education and then she said from there things start to improve so every single one of the children in this home goes to either nursery school college or university and um, so she gets up at 5 30 every morning to make 30 lunch boxes um, and they all go off to school 
some reluctantly, some very willingly, um, which isn't dissimilar to, I'm sure, children uh, in your homes sometimes. But yeah, so um, there's a video on the next slide. A couple went to visit the home of Joy in the summer and they, they made a video. It's a really long video and I can sort of share it in an email, but I've chosen a little snippet of it as to how the home of Joy came about and why GoGo wanted um, to set it up. So we're going to put the video on just from... We sort can't of... quite believe that this day has finally... ...development centre. So that is what we're going to be building here. For we'll just fast we forward it just, to 4 um, minutes 25 if all we can. These properties. And then... ...to take a moment to... Sorry, 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 okay, sorry, perfect. That's your challenge. <laughs> oh, my boy. I must try to teach your child. must not be everywhere that God visit us. Okay. Please, please. <laughs> Meet my Margaret. She lives in the township of Joza on the outskirts of Grahamstown and runs Home of Joy. A safe, healthy and happy place where all orphaned and vulnerable children are welcomed in with love and open arms. And after spending some time there, we can say that it truly is a happy place. <laughs> Here is her story. My son was HIV. At that time, I wasn't know nothing about HIV. And my child, while well, my son was died, the day he, di he died, the day I know he was HIV, was didn't know nothing about HIV. But after I, I buried my, my son, I was hate the HIV. Because maybe I was help my son, maybe, but I didn't do nothing, but I didn't know nothing. But all along, the long time, he knows his HIV, he doesn't tell me. After I, I, everything is finished, I just told myself, I go to collect all the kids at HIV, to look after them, to show the HIV no more in my house, no more, kill anybody in front of me. I went to the hospital, I talked to the patron and the nurses, but before I, t I take the kids, I went to the workshop for the HIV. It takes six months for that I on the child. Then I get the kids in my in this house. I get the kids. I call this home of joy. Everybody will joy when they in this house. No more pains, no more stress, no more nothing. I'm the mother of everybody who enter the store. In my mind, I don't know if the child is struggling. I want to take notes, I want to listen what's happening, what's going on, like that. Then if I can solve that problem, I can do it. But I, if I can, I must just talk and tell the child it will be okay. And I, I'm happy to do this. I'm happy to stay with this. If I have got family, I have got friends. My friends, they leave now. I'm happy to see that thief car. It's come to visit. <laughs> and if I didn't saw that car, I, I feel stressed. But when I saw there's a leaf car, woo, everybody say, the baby is coming like that. I'm happy. Today, 26 children live in this house and they have the full support of Liv and the community members. But it was Perfect, thank you. So, yeah, so that, that's GoGo -Go, and she is unbelievably positive. Um, so yeah after after losing her son she decided that you know no no children can live um without parents and she sort of taken it upon herself to um be their mum and although they don't get government funding um you know it's now a widely recognized place where sort of the police will contact her to say we've got another child, can you take someone else in? And um, the sort of amazing thing that GoGo -Go does is she doesn't, she then doesn't kick the children out. So, um, you know, there are some 20 odd year old um, girls and boys there that go out to work and live with her. And until they can sort of afford to be self-sufficient, she, she lets them stay with her. So. Um, it's just like an incredible place and it's so it was so nice to um 
to just go and spend time there. I didn't, I didn't do loads when I was there in terms of, you know, I kept saying to Gogo, I can do some washing for you or cleaning or just be helpful. And she was like, Abby, I have my routine and I, I do all the washing at five o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, okay, I don't get up at five o'clock in the morning. So um, I sort of would go and just hang out with the kids there and we'd read stories and they just wanted to spend time with you and a, another adult sort of in in that environment to give them um some time and i really really enjoyed spending time with the teenagers um, so that's you know that's that's the age of kids that i work with myself and just to be able to sort of give them an opportunity to share their stories and um one thing that was sort of really uh, stuck with me is I, I asked, we were cooking one day and I, I always think cooking is a good opportunity to chat with people because you're sort of distracted um, and you're not like looking directly at them. And I said, do people get sad that they, they live here? And, and, and they were, she was like, what do you mean sad? And I was like, you know, like, you know, you've been taken away from your family, some of you, or, you know, some of these people have experienced horrendous, horrendous things. And she was like, you know, some people are sad when they arrive for two days, but then, you know, Gogo just loves us so much that this is family here. Um, and so, you know, those, those children, although so sort of broken and damaged, feel so loved in that home that they're just so happy to to be there and out of the situation that they are in. Um, so if we just go back to the slide that had the pictures on of the house, I'm not sure if it was back or forward, we'll go forward. Yeah, so this, this is, I took some photos. Um, so that's the kitchen. The, the picture in the middle on the bottom is the kitchen. So where meals get made every single day for 30 children, um, you know, it's not big. There's a gas bottle in the middle of the kitchen, which sort of terrified me that if a match got dropped or, you know, it, it lended itself for a disaster and the electric oven didn't work. The kitchen cupboards were all different. For the whole time I was there, they didn't really have any running water for more than two hours a day. Um, so we were washing up in, in one bucket of cold water um, and everyone was sort of just mucking in and they had to get up at 5 a.m. to bath. In the bath, all 30, all 30 kids, one after another. I thought we were bad enough sharing water with six of us. Um, <laughs> but 30 of them would be quickly in and out um, in the morning. And so, you know, they have so little you can see there the little kids were desperate to help i don't think health and safety would be too impressed that the bolognese could have landed on his head um but they're so keen to get stuck in and to be involved and just so glad that there was someone there um to spend time with them and they all had these beautiful beds with gorgeous bedspreads um and gogo -Go made sure that every morning they made their bed tidied their clothes put the clothes in their wash so they were in really really good routines and i um i said once you know do you ever fall out there's so many of you me and my three siblings used to fall out all the time never mind 30 of them and they said no we're, we're all best friends here and i think they they value that support and that love so much um that the younger ones i'm sure do um fall out a little bit but the older ones they like one sometimes like one of the older girls would get home from school and all the kids would like run into the kitchen like she'd been away for six months to give her a hug and see her and it was just such such like a happy environment um so that's the home of joy um and um yeah again there we sort of i just made meals i, I hung out with the kids played with them we played lots of games that we play on youth weekends away um and it was just a really really special time um of sort of getting to know them and spending time with them and you'd ask go go about live and she would just say oh i'm so i'm so excited for live because i'm i'm getting older and i'm, I'm getting worried um, you know if something happened to go go she worries what would happen to these children and so 
you know, she's sort of like the sooner Liv can get going, the better, because then I know there will be um, a safe place for them to be as well, uh, because it is a huge responsibility um, for a lady on her own um, to, to look after them all. So um, if we just go on to the next slide. So what else are Liv doing at the minute? Uh, Robin and Lara just spend so much time getting to know families, so um, these two, um, mother and daughter here, are a family that Robin spends a lot of time with. They, in COVID, sort of lost everything, um, all, their, all their money, their work, their business, and are now living in the township. They can't really afford to send their children to school. Their eldest daughter still goes to school, um, but the, the, the younger two are sort of waiting until they can get some state education. Um, they're raising funds, so they're doing that through um, with this family. I went and we did some beading and made some jewellery and things, and then that gets sold in different places. So there is a, a coffee shop in town called Famous Caesar, and he sells loads of live products and all the money. So they get some money for the things that they've made and then live make a profit as well. And CISA, who sells it in his coffee shop, gets a cut of it as well. So um, they're trying to sort of support families and help families uh, whilst also raising some funds. There being a presence in the area, like Gogo said, when, when the live car arrives outside, um, she's just so happy to see them and know that they're there. And, you know, Gogo and Lungi would know that they could ring Robin or text Robin in and say I'm, I'm really struggling with this or is there any way we can get some support for this and they're just building those relationships in the community um, which will hopefully sort of keep going as as the village um, is built and grows um, and they're just praying as well and there's loads and loads of people praying so um, you know they'll be praying for financial support but also for the protection and care of all these children um, and adults that they are involved with um south africa in parts is is still quite dangerous and a lot of these children are are really vulnerable um but also adults as well are, are vulnerable and um yeah so there's there's loads of things that that they are doing whilst the village isn't actually up and running yet all the groundwork is being done to sort of create those relationships and build that ready um you know the village will be a building and all of this um, work that they're doing at the moment will feed right into it. Um, if we just go on to the next slide. So um, I just wanted to let you know really how your support um, how that helped when I was there. So um, some people gifted me financially to go and you know that was um, such a blessing to so many people. So, um, you know, one day Lunky in the nursery was like, Abby, we've not got a first aid kit. And, you know, we'd run, they'd run out of everything. So I was able to go and buy them loads of supplies for a first aid kit. I was able to do shopping with them when they needed it for things that are expensive there. So they're cleaning products um, and, you know, um, personal hygiene products. Um, I did loads of baking and cooking for people, um, which gave Gogo some nights off cooking for 30 children. Um, and we sort of had little dinner parties. This is uh, the final picture there is um, we were all eating outside. It was dark, it was cold, but we were, we were eating a meal together. And there were some really just happy times and conversations had over um, meals, which is one of my sort of favorite things in the world anyway, to be around a table with good food and uh, good friends always holds sort of a special place to me. And so to be able to do that with, with them was really special. And also we got to take um, some families out on day trips that they would never be able to go on, um, which, um, you know, was, was amazing for them. These little kids had never sort of seen some of the animals that live in South Africa. So we took them to, um, like a bit of a self-drive safari park and saw giraffes and elephants and zebras and they were just like blown away so um although they were more excited about the picnic than than the animals so um but no there was with your um, money that you gave you know you've so richly like blessed their lives um with 
just practical help really um, and also some money was left to live that they're going to use to buy either some sewing machines or a laptop or um, something because Robin does loads of so lots of sewing and craft i know colleen does lots at home as well but robin is teaching people how to sew so then they can make products to sell for live to get some money for themselves and also to make some money for live so that's a bit of a whistle stop tour of sort of what i did and when i went um but you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be right to sort of come and not talk about what I learn. And I, and I put this verse up there because, um, you know, we we talked about it quite a lot. So in Joshua one verse nine, it says, "Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go." Um, and I sort of went with this verse in my mind because I was a little bit apprehensive. Um, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I didn't know sort of what I would be doing. Um, um, but it just became more and more relevant over my time there for for the the kids and the adults that I met and um, I found it quite hard to know what to say for this part like what have you learned because you sort of think you should come back with like this huge revelation and I've been on mission trips before and previously I sort of went and, you know, was like, oh, it's amazing that, that you know, they, they live like this and they still love Jesus and they're so happy and they have, have nothing and yet they still, you know, are, are thankful and, and that is still true. But this time when I was away, I think I felt like every emotion when I was there, um, but a lot of it was like, I felt like, angry at the situation that a lot of these children were in and I was just like this is so unfair like I work in education myself and I work in Blackburn so it's not you know I don't work with um you know a lot of wealthy children and, and I, I thought about them a lot and I thought their situation isn't dissimilar but how sort of like, how is it fair that I was born in England to, you know, parents that love me, um, a nice family home, and these these guys are being born, like, in this township in South Africa with parents that don't love them, they've got no money. And I was just like, what the heck, God, is, like, going on here? And this was sort of my thoughts a lot whilst I was away, and I knew, like, I, sp I spoke to friends whilst I was away, and it it wasn't like I didn't doubt that God has a plan and I, I was just like we're so quick to share all these verses God's got a plan and the, the suffering we face now will be nothing compared to the glory we have in heaven and that is true but I was like their life is so hard and you know what what is God's plan and and I've thought about it loads since coming home and you know thought about the children that I work with as well and you don't have to go to the to around the world to to see people suffering and um you know in the uk we're just really fortunate that we have got the nhs and a, a good education system that mean that those kids that do have home lives not dissimilar to these kids in the township are looked after physically and have a good education um but i was sort of like you know I think you, I, go, I kept being like, what is God, what is God trying to teach me? What is God trying to teach me? And then sort of I was on my, on my way home and I was writing down a couple of things and I was like, no, like God is so at work and, you know, go, go who loves Jesus and every single one of those children has to go to church whether they want to or not, you know, she believes that's the most important thing for them. Lungi, every day at nursery, those kids were singing, it is well with my soul. And they might not know what that means yet. But you know they are being they are being brought up to know that Jesus loves them and the fact that the land was gifted to them and should have been hundreds of thousands of rand that is again God's hand in that situation and um, you know there are like so so many amazing things that God is doing it's just a really huge problem and so I was like what well, you know I was talking to some of Robin's friends and 
I was like, what, you know, how is this going to change? I was like mad about it. And one of them said to me, you can, you can only do what you can do and you can pray for the rest. Um, and so, you know, I really felt like, um, you know, there's so much to be thankful for and we've got to hold on to that. Um, but also there's a, a lot that we can pray for and, and, and Liv is doing a, an amazing job. Um, and, and, and these kids are so happy and they are so well looked after. And actually, if it wasn't for Liv and it wasn't for Go Go and it wasn't for Little Flowers Nursery, that wouldn't be the case. Um, so yeah, God, God was definitely sort of speaking to me throughout the whole thing and also, one thing that sort of I kept coming back to is God's not happy with this either. Like a lot of a lot of um, a lot of the problem is because of sin and because of bad decisions, and and God's not happy with that. And you know, it it he he knows that it's not how he intended for the world to be. And you know, I don't have the answers, <laughs> um, and I don't think any of us have the answers as to why sort of we're here and they're there, and our life is like this and their life is like that. But we've got to cling on to those truths in the Bible that God, you know, God does have a plan, and there is purpose to things, and we don't understand that. But all of these little snippets of like amazing things that are going on are God sort of working His hand through it, and all we can do really is support in any way that we can can whether that be financially or through prayer um, or going to visit or um you know that and just pray that that will keep growing and growing and growing and having a, a, a ripple effect into the whole of the town um so um i'll just check that i've not missed anything yeah so i, I just wrote here like how i was feeling and then but you know the positive things are that that these people are trusting in god and it taught me so much you know my problems are often quite insignificant compared to compared to some of these guys problems but but you know they every day god god will provide god will provide you know go go on that video there's a story where there was they were coming up like three days without any food um and you know she's got 30 children there and and she said I'm not worried because I know I know it will be okay. And that evening they had a phone call and it was a supermarket. I think she said that we're getting rid of loads of stuff. Can we drop it off? You know, she's fully trusting in God that he will provide um, sort of the bare minimum. And, and that is, you know, just amazing. And hopefully um, will like continue to teach me to A, be so grateful for what we've got and B, to try and help those that, um, are less fortunate less fortunate than us so um just to sort of close with i thought it would be really good to sort of share how we can be praying um as a church for live um so lara and robin both live in graham's town um and you know robin lives in a, a gorgeous little house in a sort of a gated community um but they still have to be you know super conscious of um sort of traveling around by themselves and so i think it's really important that we continue to pray for their safety um but also financial support and that um opportunities keep coming up um to them and they just keep meeting people um and they're being a light in so many people's lives that that can get um i imagine quite um like emotionally draining and tiring that they are being a support to so many people and um, so really pray that you know god can just sustain them and be with them um let's keep praying for the live land um there's a lot sort of to happen because it's been gifted to get it into probably similar to England, get names changed and get all the rights changed and things like that. So praying that that can happen quite quickly and easily and for the building work to begin. Um, praying for Margaret and everyone at the home of joy. It is like, I kept saying when I was there, like, Margaret is, she's like an angel sent from God. Like she's 75, she's got 30 children, she's adopted some of them, she's going to court for them. She is, you know, she is their adult and um, she needs prayer like to 
stay well, um, to um, be safe. You know, she's got huge gates around the home and she doesn't like them being out and not knowing where they are and things like that. Um, and also just support for her financial food parcels, anything that can sort of help her and make their life a little bit easier. Um, relationships in the township to continue to be built. Um, you know, there's loads of really positive things going on, but just that that would continue and that people would be open to live and really open to to the work that they're doing. Um, but most importantly, like live wants people to meet Jesus and to know Jesus and to know the love of Jesus. Um, and that can be hard when they're in really challenging situations. Um, but, you know, that is what is going to change lives um, ultimately and you know that is what we want for um, all of those people growing up the children we want them to know that that Jesus loves them and Jesus won't abandon them um, despite what they've been through um, you know and, and that's the same for kids in England that's what we want everyone to know isn't it that Jesus loves them and won't abandon them um, and he hasn't forgotten about them and he hasn't left them behind um, like so many of the other adults in their life will have done so yeah that's probably a lot of information um, I think it would be good to pray as a church for some of these things I think in a minute what I'll do is We'll go into a bit of a time of prayer and I'll just let um, people pray if they want to and then I will close. Um, but um, yeah, firstly, before I do that, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you um, for your financial support in going. And um, I knew people were praying for me. There were times where I was a bit apprehensive and, um, you know, I knew sort of, I knew I was going um with you know god's blessing and that people here were were looking out for me and things like that so it makes it easier um and knowing that god was with me um is you know an, an amazing sort of thing so thanks so much for that and one thing i would love us to be praying for as a church is you know what can we do i have like you know i would love to go again and i would love to take people with me um but obviously that is something that we'd have to pray about and think about but you know there's never too um big a thing for god to sort of do so um i would love to go again so if you would like to come with me well let's make it happen one day um so let's just pray for opportunities of how we can support Yeah, because of time, we've got the Sunday school kids in there as well. It'd be good if we do that uh, at home. I'll pray generally for us here. And we're going to just, we meet together on a Thursday morning, Thursday afternoon, one o'clock for prayer. Please do come. I'm going to make this a special focus there as well. Want to bless you, Abby. I'm sure you're a real encouragement to those people there and for all that you were able to give. We had like a tea here a few weeks ago and people here gave, I think it was over 3,000 pound to people uh, to live a few weeks ago. If you also wanna to give today, there are some yellow envelopes and just put any gift in there, put in the boxes, the front and back, and then just put live on the front so we know what it goes to. Any other money will go to food bank. Well, thank you so much for that. I'll just pray now for that. The band like to come up. That'll be great. Well done. So, Lord God, we thank you for the work of Live. We thank you for what they do and what they continue to do. We thank you, Lord God, for, for Margaret and for Go Go, and just that they will, that she will. Uh, know your presence with her. She's doing a fantastic job there, Lord God. And we think, could we do that? Could we do that? But you're equipping her, you're providing for her. And I thank you and, uh, and I praise you for what you're doing. But we say, Lord God, just keep them safe and provide for them, Lord God. And for Robin also, that you will just uh, keep her safe as she goes out and about doing your work, that you'll be her protector that you'll be her provider also, Lord God, in all the work that, she, that she's, uh, you've called her to do. 
So thank you for the work of Liv and for what we've learned today and for the excitement there, Lord God, of just uh, you moving and just showing yourself so willingly. Just bless you for that now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's go for it. Let's stand if we're able to. Only the splendor of Jesus, who breathes his life into fits of clay. Only the splendor of Jesus, who shapes the valleys and brings the rain. Only the splendor of Jesus, who makes the desert to live again. Only the splendor of Jesus. Teach every nation his marvelous ways. Each generation. 